Hey folks, this is Admiral Revan here, it's great to see you all and it's great to be back. So first off I'm saying it is fantastic, it's good to be here and it's good to be back. Alright, so... With that being said my friends, it's good to be back. Um, so today we are actually going to be talking about uh, the new Waterline uh, video that came out recently from Mr. Conway and Chris Santos. Now both of them are good legends and good people to uh, have to admit, good to watch actually uh, for their videos because they're good representatives for the world of warships. I have to applaud them for the hard work and everything that they've done and Honestly, this uh, latest video is a bit of more reactions and first impressions of the new nation, commanders, skills, submarines and other developments uh, that's happening in World of Warships. Now, as you notice in the title here that I have put in like uh, new nation, super battleships and more. And this is like something that uh, I've key highlighted from the, what I've already seen in the video. So let's go check it out and watch this video together. So sit back, relax and enjoy the video. Welcome captains to the next episode of Waterline, the show where we talk about all of the upcoming things that you can expect to come to World of Warships in the foreseeable future. My name is Chris Santos and with me here today is Mr. Conway. We have a really exciting episode. So that's Chris Santos and Mr. Conway, very good people um, in the World of Warships community and they've done a lot of work for us in the franchise. So, you know, like I salute them dearly for what they've done and keep up the good work, guys. But um, I love the case and the background. I really said to myself that if I had a, a case like that for my computer case, that would be fantastic. But, you know, that's all jokes aside. I mean, like I have to admit. And uh, let's continue on with the video, shall we? prepared for you. Not only are we going to talk about the next upcoming tech tree, we're also going to talk about commander skills rework, mm -hmm. we're going to talk about changes to attack aircraft, we're going to talk about the long-awaited submarines and about something called super battleships. Oh wow, Stay tuned. here we go. Let's start off with talking about the commander skill rework. Quite a bit of time has passed since we initially implemented it and we had a lot of feedback from you guys on the new skills, we had a very close and in-depth look at the statistics about who uses which skill and which ones may need some changes. As the first stage of these changes in update 0.10.4, we will remove Dead Eye skill in the way it works right now and uh, replace it with the Swift and Silent skill. And on top of that, we have some minor changes to other skills. Now we know that if you have a battleship, trained with the dead eye skill, you will be significantly impacted by this. So we will automatically reset your battleship tab of that commander with that update for free. Now I have to admit, once I heard this uh, thing going on, I was a bit skeptical about, you know, the swift and science skill. Let me explain the differences between the two. So dead eye was like you narrowed the dispersion by 10% and it was actually pretty good. Um, the trouble with Deadeye, and this is a bit of a situation where uh, people in 10.3 and before that were a bit annoyed a little when Battleship players had a tendency, a tendency to stay behind, you know, way too far on the map behind the cruisers and destroyer players. Now, they had a habit of, you know, shooting kilometers away or miles away, if you want to put it in, that in, in terms of metrics, across the map, and they're not going in um, close and personal with the battle. Now, battleships are supposed to be supporting vessels at long range, and they always have been. The thing is that the mentality that I have seen in the game, which is a little wrong, that battleship players should be with the cruisers and destroyers backing them up in a relatively speaking manner of 
within a suitable range. And the thing is that all battleships that we can agree on have different, you know, range uh, for their main guns as well as their secondaries and AA defenses. The thing is that I've been seeing in this game is that people have a tendency to just say like, oh, I'm a battleship player, I'm using Deadeye, I might as well sit about like 20, to, you know, 15 to 20 kilometers or more away from my teammates and actually just keep shooting long range. Well, it's all well and good, except one problem is that you're not providing the uh, enough firepower and support when they need it, you the most. So, they got to be, people have to get out, out of the mindset of hanging back too long. And, you know, basically a good match is where people actually really use the tactic so well by using uh, coordination and teamwork and gameplay, working together, getting close and personal with the enemy, as well as having fun with your friends or other players around the around the map with you and having a good time. The battleship gameplay, a smart battleship gameplay that I've seen and lately on NA, Asia and EU servers is that people have a tendency to, you know, use the islands as a shield and basically move up uh, casually in a uh, graceful manner and actually start picking up the targets and doing well for their damages. I have seen people out there have rocked up at least about 100 to 400,000 damage and I actually said to myself, wow, I would love to be them. And the reason because of that is because they're not afraid to be out there in the battlefield having fun. Aggressive gameplay sometimes is encouraged, but understand this, that when you're talking about aggressive gameplay, you have to be out there, up there, close and personal, where everything is at, and actually just keep pushing forward. Swift and Silence, though, is that I kind of agree and disagree now the swift and signs ability that i have replaced it with is not exactly a very useful tool and the reason why um it's not a very useful tool when i meant the word skill is because that think about it this way slow battleships like the vermont the minnesota the colorado the virginia and um any slow battleship that you can think of as less than 20 knots in terms of speed well with a 10 percent speed boost when undetected is okay the word undetected is very 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 uh, important of the key of this matter so the thing is that i find it that being undetected is great all well and good except you find yourself in a situation that I more or less say it's good to be out there in undetected and haven't fired your main guns yet. But as soon as you fire your main guns, you're detected in a way and it slows down your speed. It kind of negates what you are trying to achieve there. Now, there are speed boost flags that you can use, and they are decent. So honestly, wargaming, just put it out there, just some, some constructive feedback. I don't entirely agree with Swift and Silence for the battleships, and I would encourage you to review it, because maybe if you want people to use that ability when you are undetected and detected, Honestly, Swift and Silent with a 10% boost would be okay for when you're both detected and not detected. When you're detected uh, and it start, slows it down, that's okay. I accept that reason, except it doesn't really encourage um, people using the Swift and Silence just to rush into the battle. It's not the whole idea. Battleship game players have a tendency to sit back too much and I think the uh, ability um, that you replace Deadeye with doesn't need to be added but it can be changed like for example Swift and Silence 
if um, let's just say a torpedo attack is impending and you're less than say two to four kilometers away and you detect the torpedoes maybe a short uh, torpedo uh, sort of speed boost will happen for 10 percent or 20 percent for example just to out maneuver like and take evasive action maneuver out maneuvering the torpedoes for example or replace uh, swift and silence altogether with something very useful like for example i know you got like fire prevention on there you got preventive maintenance of there at some and some point of the commander skills uh, maybe you could look the idea that um, instead of um, calling uh, Swift and uh, you know for Swift and Silence, uh, if you wanted to re re adjust the name and also the ability for it, I would say Swift avoid uh, Swift uh, evasive action. Like for example, if you uh, execute, if it's like uh, as soon as you have like. Um, say two or three fires on your ship swift evasive action your warship will increase like uh, 10 percent uh, speed boost for example just to uh, escape from detection and from the enemy just to get away from them or have a different ability that is pretty unique and cool uh, so for example um, the commander alert awareness skill like for example not the incoming fire but alert awareness you know like uh, for uh, increased um, damage repairs flooding repairs um, prevention um, reducing the amount of fires or flooding like reduce flooding by one for example um, because like I know you did that for fires so you can do reduce flooding by one and another thing is that you can do is that um, increase torpedo protection or you know have uh, better AA uh, mastering even though you have the master skills for it. It's really uh, hard to adjust and change it because of uh, what the current skills you got there already. But honestly, each commander skill is unique in its own way for different reasons for clan battles, random battles, and ranked. And everyone agrees on that. It depends how you play the game or what you're into. Now, honestly, Swift and Silence could be replaced and or re re modified, uh, especially when some rings are coming out. So we're going to talk more about that shortly. The next stage is going to be a set of balance changes in autumn. We're going to focus on skills that may be too strong or too weak, mm -hmm. and also especially skills that are unpopular. Uh, so skills that are currently not picked either are going to have to have a buff, or in some cases they will be changed. This will be accompanied with a free that I agree with that. reset yeah. for all players, so you can That's take full good. advantage of the changes and the new system. Submarines. Yes. Internally, we've actually been working on submarines since 2017. You'll remember that in 2018 you could... Wow, 2017. Doesn't feel that long, eh? But um, submarines are good fun to play, play submarines with. in a special Halloween game mode. In 2019, the two of us were live on stage in Cologne, Germany, announcing submarines coming to World of Warships. Hopefully, some of you were there. Then in <laughs> update 0 0.9.4, we had a special game mode where you guys could play submarines. And now we're ready to talk about what the future holds for submarines in World of Warships. A lot of stuff has changed about submarines during all of these tests. Initially, we worked with oxygen, then moved to a battery mechanic. How to ascend and submerge with a submarine is very different now than it yeah. was initially. We added a complete underwater world for you. You know, the ping mechanics, a lot of things have changed in now. That's actually pretty cool because like, you know, over the time, um, what Chris Santos and Mr. Conway did highlight was very valid about the submarines in the past few years. Now, 2017 was when they started it. 2018 was a very good event. I do remember that. It was a good time. 2019, um, what they did there was actually pretty good as well. And now, when they did uh, a lot of testing in um, 
2019 and 2020, uh, I have to admit that I did see a lot of changes on the submarines in terms of like how they interacted with one another. Like for example, when I was trying to more or less, you know, like see myself dive the submarine and rise the submarine, have a good battery power, how to mitigate it, as well as take evasive action from the depth charges or incoming torpedoes from other players or uh, warships and as such, um, other bots and that. I have to admit that, that it has improved I do in due time. Um, some rings, honestly, to me, is fun to play. It is. It's great, it's challenging, it's different, and I welcome it. Now, a lot of people did say to me that, you know, Reverend, like, this is, you know, rubbish, that, you know, some rings are not really warships. Um, what are warships related? Well, check again. Some marines are an actual warship. Uh, they actually do get involved in the Second World War and First World War in different retrospects. Uh, the thing is that, you know, some marines were very more common in what, the Second World War, used for attacking convoys, used for attacking, you know, big military targets. And, you know, honestly, some marines were a warship warship to pl uh, you know to have fun with so there's nothing changed about uh, submarines in general submarines in my perspective uh, like as i think about it warships alike they deserve to be in the game so basically submarines in my opinion that the gaming mode for it should be a separate gaming mode uh, dedicated for it but at the same time though that if it's going to be involved in different, you know, aspects like clan battles or rank battles, that's going to be taken to a new step, a new level of gameplay. And this is why I'm looking forward to it, you know, very much so. So, um, I have to admit, when I first played Submarines, I wasn't 100% comfortable with it. But... And it took me a little while to get adjusted to it, but I want to say thank you to Wargaming for, and the people who are doing the super testing and everything, who are making a great progress out of it. So, thank you so much. Alright, so we'll get back into it and continue on from where we left off. Green is very different now than it was initially. We added a complete underwater world for you. Mm. You know, the ping mechanics, a lot of things have changed, and now we're going to talk a bit about how it's actually going to be implemented in the next test stage and how you can actually participate in this. This is all interesting. You can expect to be able to play submarines on a special public test server this summer. We really strongly encourage and invite you to come and participate in this set of tests so that we can gather your feedback and make sure that the introduction to World of Warships is going to go smoothly. Now, they're talking about um, when the submarines and that will come in for a special test in the summer. I assume they're talking about over in Europe time. Um, so it'll be middle of winter for us here in Australia. Now, it's okay because like it means that um, it gives us a bit of an opportunity here to actually catch up and check it out because it's going to be good. Uh, so definitely have the PTS download when it comes out. I am looking forward to it. It's going to be great. The second step of the introduction of submarines will then be happening on the live server where we will be testing submarines in ranked battles. Now the reason Ooh, why we decided to go for ranked battles instead of a special mode is that in special modes there is not a really big long-term motivation for players to stick around while this will be the case in ranked battles without influencing your experience in random battles. Our team is currently hard at work in preparing the underwater world for the introduction of submarines. Most that maps are cool. actually almost ready, already have an underwater relief and have underwater islands. But we're also going to be adding vegetation, not just to make it more beautiful, but also to make it easier for you to navigate and avoid obstacles underwater. Another thing that we of course have to add for submarines to be feature complete is a skill tree. Now, <clears throat> Skill tree for a submarine. To me, sounds awesome. But at the same time, uh, I assume that the current commanders that you do have would have a, a skill tree you know, set aside for them as well. 
that you probably could use. I don't know 100%, but don't quote me on that. If that happens, that's great. If not, that's all right. But I have to admit, the vegetation and the new graphics idea for the submarines and underwater side of things, it's not bad, except um, I'm not 100% comfortable with the idea of how graphically intensive the game could be, you know, for those who don't have a decent sized video card or a high performing graphics card that can actually handle, you know, the land, the load for both, you know, on the surface as well as underwater. Now, I know that um, the video card that I use is not too bad, but I think that, you know, in retrospect, with where everything's going on, let's just play it by ear and see what happens not just a skill tree for submarines, but we're also going to be adding anti-submarine skills to other classes. Anti-skill submarines for, anti uh, for, uh, for those uh, warships is actually going to be interesting, so that's going to be great. This will of course be accompanied with a free captain skill reset to make sure that you can prepare to take on the underwater threat. Yep. Speaking of counterplay to submarines, we made changes to its mechanics. The battery lifetime is now actually limited in duration during battle depending on the tier, nation or characteristics of the submarines and is currently at a value of roughly 5 to 11 minutes, which will make a big impact on how to play submarines and against them, especially during mid to late game. Submarines can be detected by consumables mm. such as hydroacoustic search or radar, but in the future, they won't only be detected by these consumables. No, this will also affect the behavior of their battery. If you are detected in such a fashion, you will be consuming more of the battery's lifetime wow. in that period. On the other side, since we now there's a bit of a you know a bit of a two uh, double-edged sword here um, for what they're saying. So honestly, if they're going to do that, I can see two ways about this gameplay with the battery uh, you know the battery of the submarines you know being reduced depending which tier it is it can and can't be a good thing because you see five to ten minutes does not seem long it really isn't so basically you think about it honestly when you're in the battle Battles do last at least a good half an hour. Give or take. Alright. So, a standard battle lasts at least about a good half hour. Give or take, you know. And, honestly, 5 to 10 minutes, it teaches you a couple of things. One is to actually learn how to master your submarine and actually keep yourself undetected for a long period of time. To avoid any you know backlash but the thing is that this does not help you and this is the big thing I'm gonna say this does not help you in the long run in the gameplay the reason why is because that uh, imagine you know summary here I am trying to find you know fight my way kill a battleship and then all of a sudden that I'm running out of battery power. I don't have enough engine, you know, power to my engines. I'm gonna, you know, lose, you know, um, you know, the functionality of the submarine to emergency dive or blow my ballast tanks to go up and to the surface. Now, it really minimizes the chances of survival for the submarines, I think. But at the same time, though, that the other counterattack behind that is because that they want um, the other side, the surface ships and other submarine players, to have the ability, chance, a greater chance to you know take out the enemy. But at the same time, that you know trying to keep it fun and balanced. Now I understand and appreciate what they're doing for wargaming. However, I just think that you know. It's hard to say right now before the actual release because like I'm not a super tester or a community contributor yet and I don't know I haven't seen this new idea have been put to play because I'm actually curious in the 
next coming super uh, big next coming test that they're doing that's going to be in the public server if it's going to be released in this manner so that you can actually test it out for yourself if it does i will record it and we'll show it to you out there and see what my first impression of that but just by thinking about it my first impression right now it uh, remains skeptical i don't remain 100 percent convinced because there is some things that i like about what they're doing but at the same time i don't 100 percent understand how it's going to work so we'll see more about this real soon so in the previous test the submarines had a longer battery life at least up to 20 minutes and that was good i think personally after 20 minutes is awesome then you can go up the surface and recharge but if you use like flank speed underwater yeah by all means that the battery power will be consumed at a high rate and it'll be reduced um, unless you use a quarter speed you know just to slowly get the batteries re uh, recharged when you get closer to periscope depth for example or something like that but yeah you see like there's a lot of what if scenarios going out here so you know what i'm just gonna go with any possibility for now any fashion you will be consuming more of the battery's lifetime in that period on the other side, since we have all of these you know, different ways of how to play against submarines, we will be removing the hydrophone to make it a bit easier for submarines in that regard. And once a submarine is actually submerging, it won't just be gone you know, by the snap of a finger. No, that process will be done in a gradual and linear fashion, um, slowly but steadily decreasing in its detectability and fading away. Let's talk about anti-submarine warfare. Because you will of course need some tools to be able to fight the underwater menace. Yes. We will be adding depth charges to almost all destroyers, That's apart good. from a few historical premiums which historically didn't have them. We are also That's going right. to be giving cruisers and battleships anti-submarine warfare planes. You'll be able to call a depth charge attack or strike on a certain area. The planes will come in, drop their depth charges and hopefully sink that pesky submarine. In addition to all of this, we of course made a lot of changes, you know, under the hood to make sure everything looks great when playing with submarines or against submarines. So mm. we changed markers, ribbons, and for example, interface elements. And as a little bit of a teaser, what else to expect from this is we are actually adding a new submarine torpedo armament. <laughs> and you will be, of course, able to learn more about this on our development blog in the future. I think in conclusion, mm -hmm. we just want to say that we really intend for submarines to be a very special class with a unique gameplay yes. and a lot of yes. depth to its mechanics. That is very true because like, you know, we want submarines in this game to be unique. You know, that's a unique class for what it's mm -hmm. worth. And honestly, it is something that, you know, people want to have fun with and enjoy and it's gonna be great gameplay. The gameplay for submarines is gonna be fun. And challenging all right so that's one big thing the other big thing about submarines is that it makes you <clears throat> want to play it and get to know it better and i do appreciate wargaming for keeping it historical uh historically accurate you know for the ships because not all warships had depth charges but I do appreciate the idea as well for airborne attacks with depth charges that can be dropped in the water and uh, for those who ships that you know can't defend themselves like the cruisers and battleships. Not every ship has depth charges, not every ship has a way to defend itself. But you know, uh, anything to do to protect your fleet, why not? And I remember testing it out back uh, a while ago uh, with uh, the airborne attacks with death charges, and that was pretty effective. It's like carpet bottom, it's going boom, 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 right down in the air. So awesome. A new special mode is coming to the server this oh, summer, and this time we're going to be talking about super battleships. Here you we know go. we love to try new mechanics and things in special modes, as we did with, for example, the big hunt mode, asymmetrical battles 
arms race and so on. And this mm -hmm, summer, mm -hmm. we will be playing out a what-if scenario for World War II. Yes, we're going to be talking about what if aircraft carriers hadn't dominated the skies and the seas at the end of World War II? What if nations had kept building big artillery battleships after projects such as the Amato? We have yes. two super battleships coming up for you. The first one is the Japanese ship Satsuma, kind of like the evolution of the Yamato featuring four mm. twin guns with 510 Ooh. millimeter guns. And then I might be slightly biased here, but I think this is going to be very interesting to you. <laughs> what have a German super battleship? It is a further development of the H-42 project, something that a lot of you wanted to already see in the game. And yeah. it's going to be featuring four twin guns of 483 millimeter guns. And it will wow. feature something new for German battleships as well, with a universal secondary armament of dual-purpose 127mm guns. So I hope you're going to be as excited as I am about this topic. <laughs> and now, of course, the question is, Mr. Conway, how can you guys get your hands on this? The way this is going to work is that you'll be able to play the super battleships in a special mode. However, you won't be able to just take out the super battleships. You'll have to play tier 9 and mm. 10 ships and earn a new temporary resource called intelligence. Using a certain amount of intelligence, you'll be able to unlock one okay. of the two super battleships for one battle at a time, go out, have a great time, sink every, everyone, and then, um, you know, go back and do it again. <laughs> super battleships are also going to be featuring a brand new mechanic that you may have already seen teased on the dev blog. We're preliminarily calling it adjustment firing mechanics. What this means and what this will look like is that you will be rewarded for good positioning and good aim throughout the game. Every time you land a shell within a certain radius of the enemy ship that you were aiming at, you get a point towards a counter. Once the counter fills up, you will be getting a temporary buff to the characteristics of your battleship. After the mode is over, we will have a long think about what to do with super battleships and how they might work in World of mm -hmm. Warships in the future. So please make sure to test this together with us and share your feedback and then we will see what's going to happen. Yeah, I have to admit, that actually sounds pretty cool. Super battleships. It's going to be interesting, that's for sure. Let's talk about attack aircraft. We know that the interaction with attack aircraft and aircraft carriers as a destroyer can be quite frustrating and this is something that we want to... Wow, yes. I have to admit, as a, as a standard player who has been playing carriers for a little while now, for a person like me who has gone up against carriers as a destroyer player, man, it's frustrating! <laughs> it is frustrating! But I am glad that they're making a slight change. So, this is something that you should check it out. Watch this. Because like I have to admit, it's pretty damn good. To change. Our change is going to have two components. Firstly, we're going to be increasing the delay between a carrier initiating his attack and the rockets being fired, mm -hmm. as well as give a visual indicator as to where those rockets are going to land. Sounds interesting. Functionally, this is going to look the following way. When okay. the attack is initiated, the attack planes are going to detach from their wing and they're going to open up fire with their machine guns, which, at least for now, will not be dealing any damage to ships. This was also done historically to let player the pilots aim their rockets, you know, like according to their tracer fire. From a destroyer mm -hmm. perspective, this means that you'll be able to see where the rockets are going to land and take evasive action. We know that this is a significant change to this mechanic and it will take some time for players both on CVs and on the other side on surface ships to adapt to this. But yes. after our initial tests with our volunteers as super testers and clan testers, by the way, thank you very much for always helping us with these tests, we can see that this should significantly improve the interaction between destroyers mm. and aircraft carriers. Of course, we will be conducting tests on the public test server and we invite you to please participate if you played all of these classes to you know, show us how it's working for you so we can fine-tune it and make sure it's going to be well balanced and if it can make it to the live server. Mm. Looking forward to uh, testing this out and uh, having you with us when doing so. That's pretty good. It does. 
Of course, you would also like to know what's the next sector coming to World of Warships yes. after the German destroyers that are currently in early access. And we have good news for you. It's not just a new tech tree, no, it's also a new nation coming to the game, the Netherlands. As first branch, we will release the Dutch cruisers. And in case you missed the initial announcement, we will cover briefly what makes them special. In terms of gameplay, they're rather close to mid-range brawlers, and they oh, feature a rather low range and low rate of fire, but on the higher tiers, they will have a good caliber, good armor, and also good concealment. Tier 1 to Tier 7 feature 120 to 152 mm guns, but starting with Tier 8, with the Harlem, you will get access to 203 mm guns. On Tier 9 with the Johann de Witt, you will have access to 240 mm guns. And, you know, as the top tier ship, the Haubenlöwe wow. on Tier 10, will have 283 mm guns that you might be familiar with from the German battleship Schaumers, for example. So yes. I hope you're excited about this topic um, with the new nation coming to the game. That is very good. Not only will there be a full line of Tier 1 to Tier 10 ships, there will also be a new premium ship, De Seven Provincien, which will be available to build in a brand new dockyard event featuring mm. the historic port of Rotterdam. De Seven Provincien mm -hmm. will have a slightly different gameplay, will have a massive amount of anti-aircraft firepower and looks to be quite fun to play. To make Dutch cruiser gameplay truly unique and interesting, we have equipped them with a brand new armament, the Airstrike. What this means is that you'll be able to select a target area mm. within about okay. 8 to 10 kilometers, initial testing values of your ship, and call in an Airstrike. The planes will appear and deploy bombs by parachute fall and explode. <laughs> this is actually based on historical methods of low altitude bombing, which was done to ensure that the bombs didn't blow up the planes that deployed them. <laughs> this means true. that this armament is going to be most useful against very slow targets because there will be quite a delay between initiating the attack and the attack landing. There will also not be any opportunity to control or adjust the attack once it has been launched. Hmm. It could also be interesting for rooting out those pesky targets hiding behind islands. <laughs> During the testing stage, the Dutch cruisers will be part of the pan-European tree, but of course, upon release, they will be established as a new nation. This will also affect one additional ship, the Tier 9 destroyer Friesland, that will be moving to the Dutch nation with that update. How this will affect you as an owner of that ship? There will be, of course, more information about this closer to the release of this nation. I have to admit, I'm looking forward to that very much so. It's um, very much so I'm looking forward to the Dutch nation. It's actually going to be good. Um, that parachuting bomb is, I have to admit, I have to chuckle because like, <laughs> I've seen it in action already and it's funny. Thank you very much for tuning in and listening to our latest episode of Waterline. We hope you enjoyed it and that we were able to share some cool news with you. Before we leave you, a quick disclaimer. Everything we discussed and announced today is absolutely still subject to change and in many cases, rigorous mm -hmm. testing. Yes. And we're sure that you have many, many questions about the things that we've just shared with you. As usual, we'll be hosting special Q&A streams about this Waterline episode. If you would like to participate, make sure to check the description below about the dates for these Q&A streams. And otherwise, let us know what you think about these changes also just in comments beneath this video. We hope to also see you with the next episode of Waterline and make sure to click on the follow and subscribe button if you like this kind of content. We'll be happy to welcome you on one of our upcoming streams and talk with you in person. So take care and talk to you soon. Action stations. Action stations. Well, that, my friends, was an excellent uh, video for World of Warships Waterline for a news update. I have to give a round of applause to Chris Antos and Mr. Conway for their hard work and doing it. Well done, guys. Well done. So, okay, we've seen the video, the video is pretty straightforward, alright, and um, honestly, I can tell you from my perspective that I am looking forward to the World of Warships Waterline video uh, videos to come, and also 
more the game development for World of Warships. Some Marines, I do remain skeptical about the gameplay and what the changes are going to be. I think it's going to be nice though. And in terms of a separate game mode for them and the tiers and the present and all the commander skills for the subs as well as countering attacking them is going to be interesting. I also want to say that in the commander skills side of things that swift and silence is not really a good ability that needs to be changed and needs to be revised. Now I know Dead Eye is still uh, has been removed, but I think that Wargaming is going to revise that and see how they're going to reuse it again at a later date. Which I do encourage Dead Eye to come back because me personally, I did find Dead Eye good, but we need to find a way to encourage the player set, the player base, to get the mentality out of not hanging back with their battleships and coming into the fight and enjoy the whole battle what it's meant to be to support your cruisers and destroyers as well now the thing is about the gameplay as such you know for battleships battleships as you know is designed to fire at long range and actually uh, hit the size of targets at that uh, in that retrospect but the thing is that the gameplay for being an effective battleship player is actually being up there and close and personal and actually working alongside with your teammates. Now the thing is that communication is key in, in the game itself. If teammates don't communicate and work together, then that's big, uh, that doesn't um, you know, resolve 90% of the issues. Unfortunately, it causes more harm than good, you know. So honestly, what I can say in this video, my friends, is that I am very impressed with what I've seen and heard so far for the upcoming, uh, you know, developments for this franchise. I'm looking forward to the Dutch Nation. Hey, Dutch Nation. I know some people are looking forward to that. So am I. Um, in terms of the commander skills, so a bit of a yes and no here and there, but I mean, like, I'm looking forward to see what they come up with. The Super Battleships. Now, that my friends is something pretty cool i'm looking forward to it and then on top of that the submarines it's going to be great it's going to be different and the cup bombing with parachutes i i have to admit things like oh i gotta come over but um at a gradual pace but the thing is that um carriers the gameplay for the carriers for the, the fighters in general when they about to hit the target and you see them firing machine gun fire in the water and you hit, see it splash in the water. The trouble that I do have with it is this. If your graphics settings are set to low or beneath the word high, I don't think you get to see the splashing effects really that well, um, especially in Mod Station. Um, I think that they have um, the glass water and they have removed the uh, splashing water effects if that's the case then that might need to be revised as well and the thing is that um, if you are seeing coming fire coming through and then it starts in the water and it gives you enough time for the, the battleship player um, for either a battleship destroyer a cruiser or even a carrier to say oh okay I'm gonna take a uh, evasive action right so honestly it's coming down to you know what can you do and what you can't do so it's actually pretty damn cool i mean like honestly i have to admit i have to praise wargaming for what they have done i think it's a an awesome job um i just think that yeah it's just hard to say at this point in time because, you know what? Anything can happen between now and then. So, honestly, it's going to be pretty good uh, overall. I just think that uh, what they thought about it and how they approached this whole idea of the gameplay and everything, it's going to be good. So, go to general quarters! <laughs> Go to general quarters and get ready for the battle, my friends. 
So, anyways, my friends, I'm gonna, gonna call it here. It's actually been a wonderful uh, time. So, on behalf of myself and the, the community for that I have raised, I want to say thank you to everybody out there, and I'm looking forward to the new uh, content that's coming out for World of Warships. So later on this year. So in the meantime, action stations, my friends, and go to general quarters. Go to general quarters.